Ryan in here from Virginia. <laughs> uh, so wonderful, wonderful for everybody to be here. But I was looking at this wonderful group of candidates that we have here, and this thought came to me. And wonderful to have our great governor, Terry McAuliffe, with us. Okay, give him a big applause. Yeah. 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 But as I was observing uh, this wonderful group of candidates, a thought came to me. And I just thought, let's just open this up with a chant. Okay, everybody? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is it. Let's all say, this is what democracy looks like. Okay, let's go. This, this is, is what democracy, democracy looks, looks like. like. Right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm Dan Helmer, and I just wanted to welcome everybody to our office 49 days before we flip Virginia's oh, General right. Assembly. <laughs> All of us up here are so thankful for the support of People for the American Way, Next Up Victory Fund. Uh, so thankful to have uh, Dolores Huerta here, to have Andrew, Andrew Gillum here, to have Governor Terry McAuliffe. And without further ado, I would love to turn it over to Lizette Ocampo to tell us a little bit more about the event today. everyone and welcome um, to People for the American Way's Next Up Victory Fund Virginia Campaign Launch Event. I'm Lizette Ocampo and I'm the political director at People for the American Way and right now I'm standing with the people who are going to turn Virginia blue. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. November. At the same time, we'll show the world that the days are numbered for Donald Trump's Republican Party here in Virginia and across the country. <laughs> with me are many of our wonderful Next Up Victory Fund endorsed candidates in Virginia this year. Um, of course, we have um, our good friends, the 70, 72nd Governor of Virginia, Terry McAuliffe, <laughs> Mayor Andrew Gillum, the Democratic nominee for Governor for Florida in 2018, <laughs> Dolores Huerta, a trailblazer for Workers Rise and PFA board member, <laughs> Delegate Delegate Charnel Herring, Chair of the Demo De Democratic Caucus in the Virginia House of Delegates. Um, we are thrilled to have everyone here to kick off this event. And now I would like to bring up um, our PFAL President, Michael Keegan. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. And I'm um, very excited to be here for our campaign launch in Virginia. Um, in 2017, the most important state in the country. Um, uh, and I'm honored to be here also with these tremendous heroes. Um, our, my former PFA colleague, uh, Andrew Gillum, who's now a senior fellow, the great Andrew Gillum. Uh, it's great to have him here. And also with our board member, Dolores Huerta. Um, she's not only a national treasure, but she cares so much about Virginia that she took the red eye from California to be here. So that's even... <laughs> And has been here every year with us uh, since 2013, uh, working her heart out for this important state. It was funny, somebody was saying, somebody called her an icon recently, and she said, no, I'm not an icon, I'm an ICANN. So, <laughs> which is incredibly important from the woman who invented Si Se Puede. That's like a perfect uh, poetic justice. But anyway, as all you know, when it comes to Virginia, we're uh, here uh, to quite simply win it. Um, Virginia set a national example for the rest of the country about how to win elections and what happens when you do win. Um, that's especially true this year. And in Virginia, this election is going to be the bellwether for 2020. The news that comes out of November of this state is going to set the tone for a major national victory in 2020. So our next up victory fund, I can't believe to say that we have 40, not 14, we've got 40 incredible endorsees, amazing progressives who have already won their primaries uh, who are under the age of uh, 40. Uh, and we're going to do everything we can with what we call the three M's, members, media, and uh, money, and whatever it takes to get these candidates over the finish line and uh, get the voters to the polls. So every vote counts. Uh, we always hear that expression, but that's nowhere more true than Virginia, as we all know. Uh, it's the one state in the country that was decided by one vote, and for those looking at this in their homes from places outside of Virginia, not, not talking about one seat, we're talking about one vote that couldn't be read on one ballot right. that threw control to the other side because of a name picked out of a bowl. We can't let that happen. Today, Republican control of both chambers is hanging by a thread, and this November, we're gonna complete the job. So, we're going door to door, we're hosting phone banks, we're urging members to work on these campaigns. 
We're asking people to give money directly to you guys. And um, we're holding events like this one. And um, anyway, candidates, and we're with you every step of the way. Um, and because the Virginia is a home uh, to a powerful and growing Latino uh, vote electorate, uh, we are conducting our ads both in Spanish and English, as we have for many, many years. And we know that can make a difference. Um, and we know it can make a difference because we've seen it make a difference every single year in Virginia for the last seven years. In 2012, our Latinos Vote program ran television ads in Virginia with, and radio ads and direct mail. It was our largest state, and it paid off big in 2012. And then we had the honor of working on this man's campaign in 2013, of driving out the vote as, uh, vote as well. And it's funny, two years ago, we had an event similar to this with a much smaller list of, of candidates. <laughs> They were all standing behind me who um, actually flipped seats in the House. And uh, eight of those candidates flipped their seats. And for the outside world, that's eight out of 100. That's not eight out of hundreds. That's eight out of 100 that flipped their seats. Um, and so we just know, need to go to the final step of the way. So our Next Up Victory Fund has been proud to be a part of that. Um, I just wanted to also say that winning elections is, is more than just taking power. Uh, when you win elections, um, you can actually do the right thing and do good for the citizens. I think the definition of that is the 72nd governor of Virginia um, because when he won his election, he had four short years because of, of the term limits here. And from day one, he started working for Virginians. Um, he did so many things during that time, but I think one of the, one of the greatest was did the largest um, in, in, uh, in franchi franchisement of the formerly incarcerated ever in the history of the United States of America. I mean, that was an incredible feat. <laughs> I'm not going to list as many accomplishments, but I always say one thing. Also, he stopped some of the worst things ever. He vetoed more things by the other side, the same people that want to to not have any gun control in Virginia. I mean, all of that, he stopped so many bad things. And he, not one of his uh, vetoes was ever overturned. Mm -hmm. And many of them were one vote away from being overturned. Uh, so uh, without further ado, I would like to introduce a hero, not just to Virginia, but to the country, Terry McCall. Thank you, Michael. Well, it's a great honor to be here with you all today. Let me just say, first of all, this office that we're in was my first campaign headquarters in 2013. So I want to thank Dan Helmer for choosing this place. As you know, Dan is running against the only Republican left in Northern Virginia in the House of Delegates. And Dan Helmer is going to beat Tim Hugo. Yeah. Him down. <laughs> I want to thank the people for the American Way for what they've done here in Virginia consistently. They've been for us every step of the way. I want to thank my girlfriend, Dolores Huerto, for uh, the great support. I can't say enough about this woman. Uh, when I ran for governor, she campaigned throughout the state for me, uh, was there every single day for us, getting the vote out for us. Uh, she came to my inauguration. She came to my final State of the Commonwealth speech four years later. We danced at the mansion until 5.30 in the morning. Um, she is a real trooper. And she and the people from the American Way, if you remember back in 2013, the first Spanish ad ever done in a gubernatorial race was done by the people for the American Way. Uh, it was the first Spanish ad done, and it was attacking my opponent, Ken Cuccinelli. Uh, if you remember, he called immigrants rats. And they did that ad, and I want to thank them for this. He also said it should be a crime to be gay in Virginia. Uh, so I want to thank all of you for coming out and helping me win in 2013. Um, <laughs> It's great to be here with my great friend Andy Gillum. I campaigned a lot for him in Florida. Uh, he ran a great race for governor of the state of Florida, and he is going to be back, and I swear to you, he'll be the next governor of the state of Florida, if I have anything to say about it, Andy. <laughs> uh, we have a lot of great candidates here and who we are supporting. I also want to recognize our next Commonwealth attorney for Fairfax County, Steve Descano. Um, as you know, when I did the restoration of rights, uh, it was pretty controversial uh, to restore the rights of 206,000 felons to make them full citizens of the Commonwealth of Virginia. Virginia was one of three states that permanently disenfranchised you. In Virginia, it was a felon to be a steal 200 hours. So if you took an iPhone or you took sneakers, 
you lost your voting rights for the rest of your life here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. I thought it was wrong. Uh, through executive order, as you know, I ended that practice and restored the rights of 206,000 individuals, made them full citizens of the Commonwealth, and you all know what happened. Uh, the Republicans sued me, took me to the Virginia Supreme Court, ruled that I could not do it. I had to do it individually, so I said, fine, I'll sign every damn one myself. Uh, they sued me for contempt of court. I'm the only governor to be sued for contempt of court, <laughs> and I loved it. Uh, and then I won that. But after that, a group of Commonwealth attorneys, Republicans, sued the incumbent Democratic governor for restoring the rights of individuals here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And three of those Commonwealth attorneys, uh, we had great young progressive candidates challenge them. And Steve Descano was one of those people who beat one of those Democratic Commonwealth attorneys. You got to stand and fight for the right thing. And I thank you, Steve, for getting in the arena and running for that Commonwealth attorney. So here we are, we're 49 days away. We're gonna make history here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Uh, we have an opportunity for the first time in 26 years to have control of the House, the Senate, and the Governor's Mansion. The first time since 1993. And why is that important? As Michael talked about, we got a lot done. Very proud, the largest investment in education, the history of Virginia, restoring rights, criminal justice reform. I introduced 26 gun bills, common sense gun bills. The Republicans stopped them every single time at 6.30 in the morning in a subcommittee without a recorded vote. That's what they did. They stopped a lot of the other things that we wanted to get done. How about raising the minimum wage here in the Commonwealth of Virginia? How's that for starters? How about passing background checks, shutting the gun show loophole down, getting rid of these high capacity magazines? That will happen our first month in office in 2020. But it's not going to happen if we don't elect all of these great candidates. So let's give a round of applause to every one of these candidates who have stepped up to the plate. Our state is doing great, but we got to really take it to the next level. And this is our opportunity. This is not a persuasion election. This is a base vote turnout election. We've got to get our folks out. There are no statewides on the ballot. There are no federal candidates. It is 140 members of the General Assembly. So that's why what you're doing here to all of you here today, thank you. It's about getting our folks out. We are very close in these races. I've seen all the polls. Today I think we win it, but the election is not today. We've got to dig deeper. And the people who get elected this November will be in the chair when we do redistricting in 2021. So Virginia's future for the next decade will be determined this November. So I thank you for coming out here today. I want to thank the people for the American way, for everything that you have done. Let's take this to the next level. Folks, once again, Virginia is going to lead the way. We did it in 2017 before we led into 18, where we picked up the House, the biggest pickup since 1974. We netted seven new Democratic governors, including Wisconsin and Michigan, which are very important to the presidential election. And we flipped eight state house chambers. It was because what we did here in 17 led to 18, and what we did in 19 is going to be the final straw that broke the back. Donald Trump is going down because of Virginia. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Governor. And now I'm very excited to welcome somebody who has been near and dear um, to PFAW for many years. Andrew Gillum served as the mayor of Tallahassee, Florida, and won the Democratic nomination for governor in the state last year. Andrew worked at PFAW and our affiliated People for the American Way Foundation early in his career and worked his way up to director of youth leadership programs. In that role, he founded the Young Elected Officials Network, a program which, which has grown to include more than 1,300 progressive elected officials serving the country at every level of government. This year, he came home to PFA as a senior fellow, and we couldn't be happier to have him with us. Andrew is one of the most visionary young leaders in the country today, and he joins us now. Andrew Gillum. Very generous. What's up, Virginia? It is good to be with y'all. I think I brought the Florida heat with me, uh, uh, at, at least into this room. Um, I didn't, uh, I didn't, uh, I, uh, Dolores got more miles, I think, because you, you came from, from uh, L.A., but I took the red eye from Seattle, uh, Washington, to, to make sure that we could make this event today. I want to obviously start by thanking people for the American way. Um, Governor uh, McCulloch, who served as a mentor to, uh, frankly, Democrats and progressives all around the country watching his tenure, 
Um, I honestly, listening to you talk about what you did here with felons' rights restoration, Florida is one of those other states where we permanently bar you from voting uh, from a felony conviction. Well, 65% of the people in my state decided that they wanted to overturn that law. And this is where we have to recognize that governors make a difference because my Republican governor and Republican legislature decided that they were going to do everything that they could to nullify that process, basically taking about 70% of that 1.4 million out of consideration when it comes to restoration of votes. If we don't think that elections matter, y'all, um, talk to one of those 1.4 million people who thought that they were getting their rights returned to them, who now have to go back through a process, sit before a four-person cabinet and ask to have their rights restored. This is why being here today uh, with these next up candidates is so critical, not just for the state of Virginia. I know y'all, y'all want to take this state back, uh, but, and we need you to take this state back. But I also want you to know that Florida is watching, uh, that the other 49 are watching that. Uh, what happens here, we believe will be a precursor to what will happen in the presidential elections next year. So we need y'all to win bigly. Uh, <laughs> To borrow a term from uh, someone I don't admire, uh, and I'm not certain it's a word, uh, but the point being is we've got to win in a very, very big way. And I think Virginia sits at the tip of the spear. You all are a vote away, uh, and you are two chambers. Um, you all have the opportunity to uh, not only advance Democratic legislation from the governor, but to sustain vetoes, to put forward proactive legislation through the House and through the Senate, and it's going to make the difference here. Now, I have a very, very, very soft spot in my heart for younger people running for elective office. I believe almost everybody is 40 or under. If you're over, don't worry about it. You don't have to confess at this moment. <laughs> I've had my days where I've you know, gone between uh, 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 39 and 40, but the point being is the reason why people for makes the investment is in young uh, is not just for the sake of age. Um, they make the investment in young because we believe that either through your sheer courage or your naivete <laughs> that you're prepared to do it differently. That you're prepared to enter the halls of power, uh, uh, enter the corridors of influence, and instead of having to yield and bend your way to special interests, you all go into those chambers and you bend those chambers to the will of the people. We're with you because we believe that you're going to go in there, you're actually going to shake some things up. Um, one of the things that I think is going to be the lasting legacy of your respective elections is the fact that for people who don't believe their votes don't matter, for people who believe that it doesn't matter, that young people don't count, that we are window dressing, uh, that we're good volunteers and good phone bankers, but that we never get the opportunity to serve, is that they're going to be able to look at one of these faces behind me and see that if they can do it, then I can do it as well. You'll set an example that will change the future trajectory for this state, for the next generation leadership. That's what we get by your unapologetic leadership and what Virginia gets. Uh, if you care about common sense gun reform because you believe weapons of war don't belong on our city streets, then you want to flip this house in this Senate, right, here in the state of Virginia. Uh, if you care about the fact that our kids should be safe in schools, and in synagogues, and in temples, and in their regular everyday neighborhoods, and it matters that we elect Democrats to the House and into the Senate here in Virginia. If you care about paying teachers a wage they can live on, and preparing our kids, the next generation, for their highest and best promise, then it matters that we flip this legislature from Republican to Democrat. If you care about all of the quality of life issues, to include paying people wages they can live on, to include making sure that people have access to health care where they can take care of themselves and their families and not be terrified of getting sick. Because you and I both know that this election ultimately isn't about the individuals standing behind me. This, is ele this election is about the people who lose when they lose these elections, right? The folks who can't pay their bills, the folks who are juggling between making sure they keep the lights on and feed their children at the end of the day and also get that prescription filled. And so the consequences are huge. The stakes are high. But I am extremely excited by the promise that this group represents, 
standing on the shoulders of the legacy that's been built and laid before us. I believe that Democrats are going to get it right in this state. I believe you're going to bring independents with you. And good-hearted Republicans will recognize that these are the folks who are prepared to lead Virginia into its next iteration. Will you all please give it up for these amazing candidates. Give your money, your time, your resource, your energy. And in 2019, we're going to flip Virginia blue. And in 2020, we're going to flip that White House blue. God bless you and good luck. Thank you so much. Um, and now I would like to invite our Next Up Victory Fund candidates to introduce themselves. Um, first, I just want to thank the coordinated campaign, um, the Virginia Democratic Party, um, the uh, Diane Helmer's office as well, and um, Charnel Herring and the caucus for really helping us make sure that we can do our best to support these candidates. Um, we're going to go ahead and start with Danica, and we're going to go down the line. Let's do it. Hey, what's up, Fairfax? All right, here we go. My name is Danica from Rome, and I am proud to represent the people of the 13th District of the Virginia House of Delegates, including the city of Manassas Park and the Prince William County portions of Haymarket, Gainesville, and my lifelong home, Manassas. And I am running for re-election this November 5th so we can restore the funding for the Northern Virginia Transportation Authority that the Republican caucus took away from us without restoring it and finally fix Route 28 with that damn money. Let's get it done. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Eric Stamps, and I'm running to represent District 14 down in Danville, Virginia. Number one reason why I'm running is to raise the minimum wage to a living wage. $7.25 is way too low for anybody. Let's get it done. Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Joshua Cole, and I'm the Democratic candidate for the House of Delegates in the 28th District. That's the city of Fredericksburg and Stafford County. And I am running to ensure that the working class citizens and everybody has a voice in Richmond. It's time to bring power back to the people. I'm Dan Helmer. I'm an Iraq and Afghanistan veteran running for the 40th Delegate District in Fairfax and Prince William counties. And I'm running because it's time that we pass laws so soldiers did active shooter drills, not teachers like my wife and our students. Good afternoon, I'm Kathy Tran. I represent the 42nd District in the Virginia House of Delegates and I'm running for re-election this year. It's incredibly important that we are a welcoming and inclusive commonwealth where everybody, regardless of who they love, where they're from, and who they worship, have opportunities to thrive. And that's why I'm running to be re-elected on November 5th. Thank you. I'm Lee Carter. I'm the delegate for the 50th District, which is the city of Manassas and parts of western Prince William County. I'm running for re-election because for the last two years I've been fighting for the working class in Virginia to make sure that we have a zero carbon Virginia, that we end mass incarceration, and that we have health care for all, housing for all, and unions for all. Thank you. My name is Morgan Goodman, and I am an environmental scientist running for House of Delegates in the 55th District, Hanover, Caroline, and parts of Spotsylvania County. And I am running for office because we need to address climate change. We cannot keep taking baby steps to address this issue. It has to be a priority in the next General Assembly session. My name is Sally Hudson. I'm an economics professor at UVA in Charlottesville. We're an idyllic college town where one in four families live in poverty. So I'm running to help Democrats deliver the economic injustice, justice and opportunity that will help all Virginia families secure the dignity they deserve. Nice. Hello, everyone. My name is State Delegate Ibrahim Samira. I represent Herndon right across from here. I'm a doctor. I'm running to represent uh, Virginians for the benefit of public health so that we can work on bettering people's health care systems, their education systems, all that ties into people getting access to health care. I'm also running to represent the young people as the youngest representative elected in the Virginia legislature, also the youngest Muslim American elected across the country. Right. I wanna, we want to uplift voices on the margin. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Suha Subramaniam. I'm running for the House of Delegates in the 87th District. It's Loudoun County and part of Prince William County. And I'm running to make sure we have fully funded schools and so we can pay our teachers what they're worth and make sure our kids have a quality education without having to worry about their safety. That's right. 
Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jess Foster. I'm running in the 88th House District, which is Fauquier County, Stafford County, Spotsylvania County, and a portion of the city of Fredericksburg. I am running to fully fund education so that we can keep our kids in the classrooms and out of the courtrooms. Hello, everybody. Nice to see you. Uh, my name is Phil Hernandez. I am a civil rights attorney by trade, uh, but running to represent uh, the very good district of the 100th, which is Norfolk and the Eastern Shore, running to make sure that everyone feels seen and heard in value. And this is a portion of the district that's sometimes left off of maps in Virginia. Um, and listen, I want us to just underscore the, the point that the governor made that we have an opportunity here not just to shape the next two years, but literally the next decade. It's rare to have a moment like that. So let's seize it. Seize it, Puerto. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Amanda Pohl. I am a former chaplain, a mom, and a policy social worker, and I am running to represent the 11th Senate District, which is Chesterfield, Amelia County, and Colonial Heights. And I'm running because as a chaplain, I saw way too many people who had health crises that did not get addressed by our health care system. We need affordable health care, and we need better systems, and we need it now. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Qasim Rashid. I'm a human rights lawyer and the first American Muslim nominated to the Virginia Senate in our Commonwealth's history. Uh, on November 5th, I'm looking to be the first American Muslim elected to the Senate in the 28th district. And I'm running because I've dedicated my life as a human rights lawyer to fighting for the marginalized women, lower income people, people who have been incarcerated. And it's time to pass policy that can effectuate that advocacy. Thank you. All right. Hi everyone, I'm Steve Descano, the Democratic nominee for Fairfax County Commonwealth's Attorney, which is the leader of our county's criminal justice system. I'm running to create a criminal justice system that treats everybody equally regardless of the color of their skin, how much money they make or where they live, and one that fights for justice because we know that the only true path to safety is through justice. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Karan Sainz. I'm currently the Sterling District Supervisor on the Loudoun County Board of Supervisors. When I won the election back in 2015, I was the first person of color, male, to be elected to, that, uh, to the Board of Supervisors in Loudoun County, running for re-election to make sure we have affordable housing, pay our teachers a fair wage to live, not in Northern Virginia, but in Loudoun County, because a lot of our teachers currently right now are living outside of the county, outside of the state, because they cannot afford it, and it's time to change that. And also, I'm here to represent the local candidates. Don't forget about your local candidates. For Board of Supervisors and School Board, they're just as important as our state delegates and our state senators. So go out and vote November 5th. Everybody, are we fired up? Yeah. Right, let's go get it done. Thank you. Um, and I want to acknowledge as well, we were joined by Delegate Mark Levine, um, who has been helpful in getting everyone get elected. So thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> um, and finally, um, I'd like to introduce our PFOP board member and someone who is a role model and inspiration to all of us every day. Dolores Huerta began her life's work as an activist over 60 years ago. From her role as a co-founder of the United Farm Workers and her decades of advocacy for workers, women, and Latino community, Dolores has been one of our country's foremost leaders. Her passion for justice knows no limits and she is fearless in her advocacy. I think many of you saw that she was just arrested a couple weeks ago <laughs> while taking part in a labor demonstration in Fresno. I've come to know and love Dolores and I've traveled all across the country with her on behalf of PFA and the work to engage Latino voters. And it is my honor to introduce her now, Dolores Huerta. <laughs> Let's give it up again for these incredible candidates that we have here. <laughs> uh, th this is definitely the way forward. And I just have to confess to all of you that I come from California. And there we have a two-thirds majority, <laughs> the Democratic majority, <laughs> in uh, both the House and the Senate. Uh, and of course, our governor, great governor Gavin Newsom. And our minimum wage is twelve fifty an hour. Okay, but we know that Virginia's gonna get there, right? <laughs> and that's why we're all here today. And I just wanna thank, first of all, I wanna thank uh, People for the American Way. I'm a board member of that organization for all of the great work that they have been doing on behalf of candidates, not only here in Virginia, but all over the country. And you are probably all aware that uh, PEPA was the first organization 
And as a Latina, it pains me to say this, but People for the American Way was the first organization that actually uh, created ads in Spanish. And of course, that was when uh, Terry McAuliffe was running for governor, and uh, as we know, Cuccinelli was calling immigrants rats, and that you had to use pesticides to get rid of them. And that made a really big difference in that election. And it was the Latino vote that we know as you know, Governor, uh, that really helped uh, put you over there. Wait, raise your hand there, Nelly, okay? Because you're one of the people who was out there working on that. And uh, the Latino vote, actually, uh, considering the small percentage of Latino voters in the state of Virginia, uh, was really, I think, instrumental and uh, made that margin of difference uh, in the, what, what was happening there. Uh, the other thing is when we think of the work that people has done in electing uh, young people uh, to different offices. And everywhere I go around the country, I run into uh, you know, uh, elected officials. Uh, we call them uh, young elected people that came out of PFA and to see the uh, great positions that they now hold. And uh, it just makes me very, very proud to see that uh, this effort. And as we all know, we're all going uh, forward and working forward uh, to uh, create a progressive uh, country in the United States of America and fight all of these isms that are right now uh, you, you know, you might say paralyzing our society right now and uh, creating the terrible things that we have been witnessing just in, in the last couple of months of people getting killed, as we know. And so we know that this is something we all have to fight for and we have to uh, cr uh, create a society of justice. And we have the people here in this room that are definitely going to do that. And also when we think of uh, why this is so historical, because it is Virginia. That's why it's so historical. And definitely what happens here is going to influence the rest of the country. And so we know we have a lot of work to do between now and then, uh, but I know that the people here in this room are really going to uh, set, the, set the standard, uh, create the path for us to go forward uh, to create a, a true democratic society. And I just love to say to everybody here, and I want you all to, uh, to shout it out with me. I'm just going to ask you all a question. The question is a very simple one. But I want you to shout it out loud so all of the haters, and you know who they are, uh, so they can hear us, okay? And uh, the question I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you who's got the power. And I want you to say, we've got the power. When I say what kind of power, we're going to say people power, all right? And let's do it really, really loud so all of those white nationalists and the neo-Nazis. And, <laughs> uh, and one other thing, too, is the reason this is going to be so historic, because as you know, I'm also a feminist. I'm on the board of uh, the feminist majority. And the fact that we could have actually gotten the state of Virginia uh, to vote for the Equal Rights Amendment and that it was lost by one vote, is something so tragic. And uh, we know that that's not going to be repeated, right? That's not going to be repeated because we are going to get in there. We're going to win and we're going to vote for the ERA that will definitely, and when we do it here in the United States of America, uh, this will send a message throughout the world, okay? So we can do it. So I'm going to ask you the question, who's got the power? And I want you to say, wait, 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 wait for me. So do it all again. Remember that when we got to work together, right? Okay, let's go. We got to work together. Okay, let's go. I want to say, who's got the power? I want you to say, we've got the power. What kind of power? People power. Let's go. Who's got the power? We got the power. What kind of power? People power. All right. Are we going to go out there and bring everybody into Virginia? Make sure we get out that vote. Make sure we get all of these wonderful candidates elected. What do we say? Se puede? Si se puede. All right. Let's all do it together. Let's go. Si We're okay. Let's go. Okay. So, you know, I was I was very fortunate to be here uh, uh, when uh, Governor Terry McAuliffe uh, to be here at his inauguration, and I remember that day because it was raining so hard, and then when Terry came up to speak, all of a sudden it stopped raining. <laughs> I mean, so much, so much power, really. <laughs> and God is with us, Dolores, <laughs> with the Democrats. Right, and then after, <laughs> after the ceremonies were over, it started raining again. And I, I thought to myself, that was such a great sign, right? So we know that that sunshine is going to prevail, and hopefully I will be here with all of you again uh, to celebrate the next inauguration when you all get elected. All right? Okay. So move all right. thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. and thank you all for coming. Let's sign up for those shifts. Whoever's going to go out to Canvas, whoever's going to go to Phoneback, let's get to it. Thank you all. Yeah.